Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's video is about faith. Faith is the most important part in the manifesting process. Without faith, there is no manifestation. Neville himself says that the law operates by faith, meaning faith is the very substance that our desires um, are made of when they crystallize in the 3D reality. We can compare this to a car without gas, we cannot operate the car. It doesn't work. We can't get anywhere. So that is how important faith is to our manifestations. And I want to offer you two ways that we can obtain that faith. There's a subconscious method and a conscious method. And both of them work and you can use them in conjunction. But before I dive in, please subscribe to my channel if you want to support it. Click on the bell icon, click on the like button. And also please do leave a comment if you have any questions at all or just feeling very chatty today and you want to just tell me about your day. So let's dive right in. Neville is very clear on the fact that the law operates by faith. He, he couldn't make it any clearer. So it is crucial that we practice faith and understand first, of, first and foremost what it is. Neville says that faith is persisting in your assumption that you are already what you want to be. Meaning it's a habitual um, occupying of the state of the wish fulfilled. Staying true to your assumption, returning to your assumption and staying faithful to the unseen reality. And faith makes the unseen seen eventually. So how does it work? There are two ways that we can get to faith. Number one is Neville's favorite technique, which is a state akin to sleep, um, or rather looping a, a scene or a, a phrase in order to evoke the feeling of having what we want. Now, we don't need to do that. We don't need to think about a scenario. We don't have to say a phrase. But what's important to understand is that it's about the state. It's not about the images. It's not about what you hear. These things can play into it. And if they are part of your manifestations, then obviously focus on those. But what's more important is your feeling state. Because that is what impresses the subconscious. Feeling is the secret. That is what it hears. That is what it understands. So we want to get very clear on how what we feel if we now have what we wanted. And I like to ask myself, okay, this has now happened. I now have this. I now am this. How do I feel? How do I feel? And you want to spend some time in this step. You don't want to rush into this because it's important to get the actual feeling that you would have. If you don't have that actual feeling, you will probably just manifest the scene, but without the content. So it could be that, you know, you are in the place where you imagined you would be, but nothing is happening on the topic that you want to happen. So it's very important that we get clear on the feeling, the state, the identity that we would have if we now had what we wanted. And then we feel ourselves into this and then we drift off to sleep and sleep in the state. And I have to emphasize here that the sleep aspect is crucial for this technique. This technique works if you do it just during the day, that's fine. But in order to really get the make the most of it, you want to fall asleep in it. And the reason I say this is because from my personal experience, there's no method that compares that has gotten me results faster and more miraculously than this. When I fell asleep in the state of the wish fulfilled, I had one of the craziest <laughs> manifestations play out in terms of the bridge of incidents. And I woke up with faith. I woke up with this feeling of like an irrational, completely irrational sense that everything was taken care of and I had nothing left to do on the subject. And you know what? I was actually fine with my current reality. I didn't want to change it anymore. I was like, oh, that's fine. You know, that's completely cool. And that was literally the next morning after I had done this technique. So when you do this correctly, when you truly merge with that state and feel it as true right now, not in 10 days, not in a week. You have to feel it as if it's happening now. Like you are in this new reality right now. This second, not in five minutes, like literally now. And that's what you want to feel. You want to feel this feeling of uh, present tenseness, of being in the moment, in this very moment. And when you do this and you fall asleep in this state, 
your subconscious will bless you with faith. There's nothing else you have to do. No affirmations, no nothing, just literally nothing. <laughs> and um, you will be on your merry way. Now, obviously, this technique can be challenging. It can be difficult. It's hit or miss. I lucked out, to be honest, on that, that one time where I had this amazing result. And it's difficult or it can be very difficult to, to recreate this consistently because there are so many factors involved here. It's not just that we, have, we are just looping a scene or looping a feeling, but we have to fall asleep in it. And that is where, you know, we have to experiment a bit with timing and when we go to bed and when, or, you know, sort of like methods to induce that state. And it doesn't work for everyone. And that's not a problem at all. You do not have to use this technique. You can absolutely get to faith with my second method that I love to use, which is affirmations. These are not affirmations directly related to the subject that you're working on, but rather about the manifestation process as a whole. So they're on a meta level. And these will put you, or at least they, they put me, into a state of faith. So I like to say things like, I'm not looking for it. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not searching for it. I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. This will have to meet me where I am. I'm not going to look up. I'm not going to look left and right. I'm not going to search for this. I'm not going to hope for it. I'm not going to give meaning to clues. I won't do any of it. I will pay attention when it shows up. When this manifestation shows up, God, you will have to be extremely clear. You have to literally spell this out for me. It has to be so evident and obvious that I cannot miss it. So unless that moment happens, I will not be paying attention and I will rest assured that you don't require me to pay attention other than the moment where it manifests. So I'm setting up these parameters and I'm talking myself into this state where I stop seeking it. I stop looking for it. I stop trying to manipulate the process and I give up the idea that I can control this and I'm handing it over to God or, you know, your subconscious or your higher mind, the higher aspect of you that's in charge of this uh, task. And this works. This works every time I do it. But the key is you can't flip-flop. <laughs> so if you talk to yourself like this, you have to make it a habit to stay there. Every single time you're like, but where is it? Why hasn't it happened yet? You need to, you need to realize you cannot think that way. Why? <laughs> because the person that has what you want doesn't think that way. They're not looking to get it. They have it. So... You need to connect with the future you that has what you want, where you're not actively trying to take action to obtain it. And by that, I mean, you know, action where you are, you think, okay, I'm really ill with the flu and I'm in my bed, but my friend has invited me to a birthday party and I don't want to go, but I think maybe my SP is there. So I better go to the party because what if, what if I miss them? What if I don't see them? What if this is an opportunity for me? Right? This is the kind of crazy thinking we want to stop because this thinking never, never, ever, not once, not literally, there's no chance that this will lead to your manifestation. It just simply does not. And everyone who's done this 10 times, 20 times will know that it doesn't work. It just doesn't. So we want to stop it. We want to stop this uh, fear that if we stop controlling our reality, if we stop, you know, doing what we think we need to do, that the thing we want will somehow slip through our hands. We have to give up the state of the wish not fulfilled, where we're like, oh, I don't have it. Where is it? How can I make it happen? Why is this happening to me? Why does everyone get what they want? Why, why not me? We have to give that up. And when we give it up, we want to replace it with those affirmations uh, I just um, gave examples of, like, I have it, I have it, I'm not looking for it, I'm not searching for it, I'm not going to go out of my way to get it. That's a big one because you want to stop chasing after this manifestation. The manifestation will find you. Well, it doesn't matter where you are. It will find you. So, But you need to believe that. By believe, I mean feel that. You want to feel that in your body. You want to talk yourself into this state where you feel an absence of, of um, fear and an absence of lack. And you don't have to like it. That's that's the interesting part. You don't have to like it. 
I've done this technique on various subjects and there were times where I was so annoyed that I couldn't look for it. I couldn't search for it. I couldn't um, hope for it. And it really pissed me off. I was like, why? But I really want to. I want to hope for this. I want to like take action on this. I want to I wanna have it now. And I told myself, no, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to do this. So I was like, fine, fine. I'm not allowed to look for it. So I'm not looking for it. I'm not looking for it. So it doesn't matter that I was in a bad mood about it. But it worked. It kept me in the state where I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't hoping for it. I was not paying attention to its to its absence. And I was just focused on containing my energy within myself. Just focusing on, I have it, I have it, I have it. I don't like it. <laughs> I have it, I have it, I have it. I don't like this. I have it, I have it, I have it. So I'm not looking for it. I'm not searching for it. Right? So you want to literally just... Do whatever it takes for you to center yourself in that state. And for me, that's talking to myself like I just did. <laughs> and I love writing these affirmations down slowly because then you're, you're very focused on it. And the most important part is you want to feel this in your body and also understand the logic behind it. Because the truth is that God does not need you to chase after your manifestation God doesn't need you to do all of these things and worry about it and hope for it and search for it and whatever. You are not required to do those things at all to receive your manifestation. And you have proof because when you look back at all of the things you've manifested, consciously or accidentally, you will realize that this thing came to you probably in a moment where you were not looking for it. You were not obsessing over it. You were not chasing after it it doesn't matter if this moment was like a minute five minutes a week but there was a span of time where you didn't think about it and where you were at peace and that's when it came in so that is what we are trying to replicate consciously and you can do it 100 percent. you can do it i have faith in you so if you're doing these techniques of course you can use them in conjunction say the affirmations during the day and then use um sats at night and um, you want to play around with the timing of sets. I don't think it's a good idea to do it before bed. I think it's a better idea to do it after a couple of hours of sleep. So early in the morning or during an afternoon nap. But the important part is that you fall asleep in the state. This is so key. This is literally the, the key <laughs> to your subconscious. And lastly, I want to emphasize that if you're stuck in your manifestation process... And you're not seeing a result. It is very likely that you have not moved into a state of having what you want or no longer lacking what you want. It's the same state, which is also the state of faith of the Sabbath, where you're no longer concerned with all of these stressy things, but you have faith that you've placed your order. You've told God, listen, this is what I want. And I trust, I trust that you will deliver this to me in the perfect timing in the perfect fashion, in the perfect moment. And they cannot miss it. I don't have to be afraid of missing it because you will deliver it literally like right, like it will just like meet me wherever I am. Doesn't matter who I'm with, doesn't matter where I'm at, doesn't matter what time it is. You will deliver it to me and make it very clear that this is my delivery. <laughs> you want to spend a lot of time in that, um, practicing that state rather than focusing so much on the details of your manifestation. We tend to spend a lot of time thinking about the thing that we want from a state of I don't have it. That's why we're thinking about it, because it feels great. It's like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing to have this? Or wouldn't it be so great if that happened? But we fail to occupy the state of actually being that and having that. So we want to spend a lot more time feeling it, feeling like, yeah, what would it be like if that was true? right this very second what what how would I feel and spend way more time feeling ourselves into this state of faith I know what I want and I trust that God is bringing it to me I trust that my subconscious is working on it I trust that it will find me wherever I am and I don't have to lift a finger to make it so because that is Neville's promise we don't have to lift a finger to make it so consciously deliberately 
Of course, we will be required to take some form of action, but the action will never come from a place of lack. It will never come from a place of fear that if we don't take this action, we will miss an opportunity. It will never come from, from anything like that. But more importantly, we shouldn't even be worrying about that. We shouldn't be worrying if this action leads to the manifestation because that will actually put us back into the state of I don't have it. Because a person who has it isn't wondering if that action will lead them to the manifestation that they have already experienced. Because they already have it. So they are at peace. They are chilling. They are not, not thinking that way. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If you have any questions at all, please leave them down below. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.